In the last objectivity video, we went to Houston and showed you all the NASA Apollo moon rocks. Kilograms and kilograms of moon rocks. And I saw some of you in the comments saying, this is amazing. How is Keith Moore back at the Royal Society going to top that? Kilograms of moon rocks. And you know what? In a funny kind of way, I think he has topped it. Oh, I think, well, I think we can top that. Yes, of course. And do you know what he's topped it with? This tiny, tiny container containing 26 grains of sand. Brady, you've just held a piece of the moon. How cool is that? Indeed, because these 26 grains of sand are Russian moon dust. And that is like much rarer than gold dust. It is, yeah. How have these 26 grains of sand from the moon made it to my hand? I find this kind of thing quite moving, Brady, because I, I watched the Apollo moon landings. Of course, I expected to be on the moon by now, but holding a piece of the moon is, is the next best thing, I think. And this little sample here was part of a gram of lunar regolith sent to the Royal Society by the Russian Academy. These ones came from Luna 24. Luna 24. Now, as I understand it, this was one of three successful goes that the Russians had at landing a robot on the moon, getting a little bit of soil and blasting it back to Earth. The robot probe lands on the moon, an arm comes out, drills down, gets, was it like over 100 grams? Yeah, they got a decent amount. Blasts off the moon, leaving the, the bottom part of the probe mm -hmm. behind, flies back to Earth, parachutes down. Yep, parachutes in Siberia, I think, and the, the material is collected. And this was the last of three times the Russians did it. This was 1976. Mm -hmm. This is actually the last time we actually got anything back from the moon. Last lunar sample, yeah. And they give one gram to the Royal Society. Yeah. That's, that's right. not a gram, that's much less than a gram. It is. So the original sample was very much bigger, and you can see how big by looking at this, the original container the samples were sent to the Royal Society. And this is great, I really like this. Ooh, yeah. And you can see on the top there, you have your, your USSR. So this is the original specimen case. We can maybe just open it up. People are always fascinated by a glove protocol. Mm. Because we're dealing with metal, we don't use the white gloves. So we use the blue gloves. Blue, purple? Yeah, blue, I think. I mean, I'd go purple. Two by two, hands of blue, give the people what they want. Let's go. All right. I have no idea what that was about. All right, you'll find out. Okay. So here we go. You can see the little interior there. Oh, yeah. And you can see here the little original canisters that that sample came in. Now, this one's been checked. There's nothing left in this one. But you can see they would just slot into the uh -huh. respective container holes this, there. This is what you could use for stealing dinosaur embryos. I've hit you with a popular reference this yeah, time. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> As I understand it, the gram was actually made of different parts of the core sample, so it came That's in correct. different containers. Yeah. Right. Nice little sound there. I can confirm nothing. Empty. So the original sample, they, they took a part of it and kept some back as pristine sample. Then they separated it down so that they could then analyse the various types and sizes of material. Now we have to handle this very carefully, of course, because we don't want them scratching into each other and breaking into smaller pieces. Amazing. You know, people went to so much trouble, spent so much money, employed so much technology to get something as humble as this back to work for scientific analysis. Uh, there's something great about that. This came from a part of the moon called the Sea of Crises. And by the way, we'll put a picture on the screen right now, which was taken more recently by a lunar orbiter. And you can actually see the remains of the probe on the moon still, that Russian probe where it landed. The landing section is still mm -hmm. there. So I did say to Keith, Keith, this is, this is amazing, but can you dig me up some paperwork to go with it? And boy, did Keith deliver. You know scientists love to keep records. Now, Colin Pillinger, who's a famous scientist from the UK, he's mm -hmm. no longer with us, but we have talked about him before. Yeah. He was a real driving force behind obtaining the samples. And we see some of the early correspondence here. Dear Keith, but Not me. <laughs> a different Keith. <laughs> Would you be interested in making a joint request via the Royal Society for some Mare Chrysium, the Sea of Crises, samples collected by the latest Russian mission, Luna 24? Just a sentence in a letter to a colleague is how mm. this all starts, you know. Someone yeah. just has the cheekiness to ask. Yeah, let's get some of this stuff, it's cool. And so begins a series of letters and things like that. And gradually the Royal Society becomes involved in it. 
Protocol on Discussions between Representatives of the Academy of Sciences of the USSR and the Royal Society of London concerning the selection and presentation to the Royal Society of lunar samples obtained by the Soviet unmanned spacecraft Luna 24. Catchy. Well, not, not quite the donation of the samples yet, just the protocols on the discussion behind presenting uh. the samples. But here we start to get the serious information about the gift. So we see here the famous Russian news agency TASS is printing this article. It's in Russian, but we have here translation. Capsules with lunar rock were handed over today to British scientists in Moscow. This is the fifth country to have received for research lunar rock brought to Earth by the Soviet automatic station Luna 24. We're the UK representative for this sample if you like. Inevitably a committee is appointed to allocate it uh, to uh, scientists applying from university departments so they may have a good uh, idea of what they want to do with the sample. They make the request, the Royal Society judges whether or not it should be done. Let's just give people a small taste of how this process was done, how they decided who got the specs. Mm. Here we have examples of all the forms that scientists are filling in mm. to say, if I get some specs, yeah. this is what I'm going to do with it. So this one that happens to be on top here is proposing an experiment for the mineral chemistry of rocks and fines. Right. They're proposing to mount in araldite rock chips and or fines for microprobe analysis. Ships could be used subsequently for instrumental neutron activation analyses, followed by isotopes of argon age determination. This person, it says here, is asking for up to five chips, preferably over five milligrams each. Half milligram fines, ambitious. Type of material requested chips, preferably crystalline rocks and fines. This person has said that their experiment will be largely non-destructive. Largely. Largely <laughs> non-destructive. Here we have an application by Dr. Pillinger himself, mm. the man who made it all possible. And now he himself is still having to go through the application process to get some of these Going chips. The, Society Committee, yeah. Yeah. the title of his proposed experiment was Carbon Chemistry of Lunar 24 Samples to measure hydrolyzable carbon, trapped hydrocarbons, and possibly total carbon of selected soil fractions. What he was trying to do was examine the chemical effects of solar wind bombardment of the lunar regolith. Yep. That's the soil, basically. How much did he want? Particulate separates of a number of at least five of different size ranges. Material predominantly below 250 in size. Five small pieces. Yeah. And he says, the techniques used totally destroy the samples. <laughs> You're not getting them back? No, no. Okay. So these are images taken of each of the samples. So obviously to quite a high magnification and you can see each grain in all its glory. Look at that. All the original grains before they're distributed, destroyed by the likes of Pillinger with mm -hmm. their experiments. I wonder if any of these pictures are the 26 grains you still have. They are, yeah. How do you know that? Because I looked it up earlier. <laughs> Is each grain got like an ID number or something? Yeah, they do. Yeah, because each specimen has a number and you can see them uh, written on the uh, thing here. So that's 24125. Oh yeah. oh yeah, on the back. Yeah, yeah. And you know which grains you have. Each sample, yes. Oh, Keith, you know I love this stuff. You know I mm. love moon stuff. Yeah, got a really big one here. Look at that. Oh yeah, yeah. that's super blown up. I thought that was like a big moon rock, but look, no, we've got a scale. We've got a scale. This is probably millimetres, I think. So yeah. it's probably about six. That's probably one of the biggest ones. Look at those, James. You can see the scale there, one millimetre. So these are still tiny. I'd still like to have one of those, wouldn't you? Even if it's only small. Very if good. you had one, if you mm. had a one millimetre grain from yeah. the moon, like it was given to you as a farewell gift from the Royal Society, yeah. what would you do with it? Uh, give it to a scientist to work on. <laughs> that is so boring. I know. Yeah. You could have it made you? I'd have it made into like a ring or like a piece of jewelry. I'd wear right. it. I'd, okay. I'd have it like, no, I'd have it m m built into a watch. Interesting, yeah. We've still got all the original slides as well of these pictures. 35 millimetre slides. Like it. We've also got the scientific papers that mm -hmm. arose from the investigations, some really nice personal correspondence. But got Keith- notebooks, got all kinds of things. Keith, before we finish though, mm -hmm. can I have one last look at those grains? You can. There they are. 26 grains of Russian moon dust. I'm gonna call that the smallest object we've had so far on objectivity. I think you're probably quite right. So that would have yep. been flat, this section round here. Mm -hmm. That honeycomb at the top would have just been a flat all the way across there. And a bolt has been explosively, boomf, that's how it catches it. 
That's amazing. Yeah. And then we have this, which I don't want to touch, partly because uh, it's, it's a space shuttle tile. Like, yes. this, is, this is a thermal tile, but also because of something you said earlier about not touching the back of it. Yes, yeah, so this particular sample is actually still enclosed in plastic, so it is safer to handle. We should say what this is. This is one of the thermal tiles that would have been destined yes. for the underside of the space shuttle mm -hmm. for re-entry. Right. 